looking to move to Austin, Texas. Well, in this video, we're going to spend a little bit time focusing on what is the true cost of owning your own vehicle if you are not depending on public transportation here in the city. So tune in as we dive into the different costs associated with owning your own vehicle here in Austin, Texas. And with that, we're getting into it right now. <laughs> Before we dive in, if this is your first time visiting the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about moving to Austin, Texas and surrounding areas, then subscribe below and tap that bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market in Austin, Texas. I'm Marcus Jordan with the Premises Place Group, brokered by EXP Realty, and we hear from people just like you looking for help with their move to Austin, Texas and surrounding areas. We love hearing from you. So whether you're looking to move into an apartment, buy a home or invest, all of our contact information is in the details below. If you're looking to move in five days or 45 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or even schedule a Zoom call so we can help you make a smooth move to Austin, Texas. So cost of living focused on transportation. The reason why we wanted to do this quick little video is because when you when we mention cost of living in, in other videos, there are so many elements that make up what is cost of living, right? So we wanted to just take one little piece and focus on it because the, a lot of conversations are around public transportation or how do I need a car when I get around? If you're coming from somewhere else, if you're already here, then you're very familiar with the transportation situation. But if you're thinking, well, should I get a new car? Should I not? Is now the time to get a new car or isn't? Should I wait? Hopefully this video will be helpful in helping you make that decision. So if you're moving from somewhere else, I hope this is insightful. If you're already here, but you're debating on if you should get a vehicle or not, I hope this is also insightful for you. So we're gonna start this off with a couple of quotes from different articles that we were reading just to kind of set the tone. The first one we wanna highlight actually comes from Carfax. They put out a used car index uh, report every now and again. And the latest one we were able to find states, while prices have dropped this month, they remain high compared to long-term trends. Many factors are contributing to this. Continued slow rebuilding of new car inventory, high prices on the new cars that can be found, ongoing microchip shortages, and interest rates that are higher than they were a year ago. Right. So that's Carfax used car index that we are pulling that information from. Another highlight comes from Consumer Reports, and it says prices have finally begun to soften after a historic used car price spike throughout much of 2021. But they remain higher than at any time before 2020. So you are seeing prices come down but it's still high relative to what they were before the pandemic. And then lastly, another highlight, we're gonna bring this from Kelly Blue Book, and they state that figure is still historically low. And in this particular case, they're talking about inventory, the available inventory of used cars. Automakers built about 8 million fewer cars during the pandemic used car inventories could remain low for years as those cars never find their way to the used market, keeping prices higher than Americans had grown accustomed to. And that is pulling from Kelly Blue Book's article from this June, a couple months ago. So why do we start that off there? Because I think we all know and we've all seen each one of these highlights that have been mentioned. So let's get into, well, why are we talking about used cars? What about new cars, Marcus? At the time of this filming, we were only able to find national averages around new cars and those prices. That doesn't necessarily help you if you're in Austin or moving to Austin. So we'll have to come back and give you an update on new cars a little bit later. But most people, when they're just moving, are starting out finding used cars. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. Now, obviously, the number one element or the number one step in the full cost of owning your own car is the cost of the car, right? So naturally, that's where we're going to start first. 
iccars.com conducted a used car study. They did, well, it's actually one study with two pieces, and that was the 10 least expensive cities to buy a used car and 10 most expensive cities to buy a used car. Well, Austin was not on the 10 least expensive cities. So we're going to skip to the one they were on. And that was 10 most expensive cities to buy a used car and Austin came in number three. Surprise, surprise, right? Austin, average price of used car was $36,827. That is a 7.6% price difference from the national average, meaning it is almost 8% higher than the national average used car price. And if we want to think about that dollar-wise, dollar that's about $2,599 more than the national average for a used car. So if you are coming from a different state, if you're coming from a different place, different country, please prepare to know that you're gonna pay a little bit more of a premium when buying or purchasing a used vehicle in Austin, Texas. Now, that is an average, right? So that does not mean that every car lot or every car you see is gonna be priced at that price point. So the one thing to keep in consideration is, one, the type of car you're looking for, right? And then two, is how much inventory does the dealer have of the car that you're looking for? If they have a lot of inventory, you might have a better a better chance of finding a car, a used car, at a lower price point. But if they only have one or two or can't get access to additional vehicles or additional used car inventory from other locations that they may be connected or aligned or associated with, then you may pay a little bit more. So please know that those two factors are going to play a major, major role in your purchase of a new, excuse me, of a, well, I guess it will be a new used car for you. It will be new to you, but it'll be a used car, right? Just don't want to tangle that up there. And so keep those factors in mind. What car are you looking for? How much inventory does the dealer or someone have of that vehicle? And that will influence uh, the price point for that used car. The other element of the true cost of owning your own car is gas. Duh, we all know that. However, what does gas look like here in Austin? Well, that is going to vary depending on the areas that you're getting gas, uh, the street, the road, how busy is that intersection? Is it near a neighborhood, near a highway? You know how gas works. So, <laughs> but we have a couple of shots here in the video just so that you can see where they are at the time of this recording. And we're looking and we are in September of 2023. So. Obviously, this these prices are going to change based on what oil is going to be. So by the time you're seeing this, it could be higher or lower. But depending on when you're seeing this, let's be honest, it's probably going to be a little bit higher. Right. So plan and budget accordingly. Hopefully the numbers that we're seeing right here allows you to at least have a benchmark or at least just an entry point to help you work through your gas uh, budget based on how much you have to drive and where you have to go and how often. The other element of the true cost of owning a vehicle is going to be maintenance and repairs, right? So since we're looking at getting a used vehicle, it might need some work. If not now, maybe a little bit later, right? So depending on how much you're going to be on the road, how much wear and tear uh, that you're going to apply to your vehicle, count for maintenance and repair right your tune-ups your your oil changes hopefully nothing bigger i won't say any bigger repairs right now because i don't want to jinx the whole thing but make sure you know that the number of maintenance and and repairs is going to be based on the vehicle you get how old the vehicle is how much mileage uh, is on the vehicle so do account for that in your budgeting 
The next element we want to go to is registration fees and taxes. Registration is once a year, but hey, it's still a cost, right? If you're not, I mean, in my mind, you're not buying a, a new, a, a new used vehicle to turn around and get rid of it in six months, or maybe you are, I don't know. But most individuals I speak with are keeping their vehicles for a little while. So if you're gonna keep your car for, excuse me, or your, your vehicle, cause you may have a car or SUV, truck, whatever you're into, or a hybrid of all of the above, you're gonna have that registration fee and tax breakdown every single year. So if you think that you're gonna hold on for this used car for 10 years, account for having to pay that 10 times. Now, here's the thing, registration, taxes, and fees do change over time. It's gonna be based on your type of vehicle, how big or heavy is the vehicle. So know that what you pay for registration, taxes, and fees may be a little bit different than anyone else based on the vehicle that you have. I know I'm telling you things that you probably already know, but the intent of mentioning it now is that if you're keeping a list or you're, you're uh, trying to keep tabs, you're having it all in one place, okay? So not telling you anything new, let's go to the next one. The next piece of owning a vehicle is insurance. Everyone loves paying that insurance premium, right? <laughs> but specifically in Austin, Austin is growing, okay, duh. But based on the area that you're moving to or that the vehicle will be housed or where it will be parked, that will influence your insurance rate because it's gonna be based on a variety of factors. Some of those variables are gonna be credit history, driving record, the type of vehicle that's being insured, your marital status, uh, a lot of variables, right? But going back to what we were saying as far as where the car is gonna be parked, please note that your insurance quotes and premiums are hyper local. What do I mean by that? Just because you move to Austin, Austin does not have a blanket insurance quote or premium rate, right? If you hyper local, meaning very, very local, right? Local locale. If you're living in one zip code, you're typically gonna have a different insurance quote than another zip code. A lot of ways that you can differentiate what that's gonna look like is how dense is that area? Are there a lot of people in that in that zip code? Are there a lot of things, um, you know, things to do? Um, what What is the crime rate in that area, right? All those different things are gonna be factored into your insurance premium and your quote. So ensure you account for that when you're planning for insurance or changing insurance. Now, when you're looking at insurance in Austin, it's just like the used car. It is a little bit of a premium in comparison to the national average. Referencing an article from MarketWatch, they share in Austin, Texas, the average cost of minimum coverage car insurance is about 17% higher than the natural national average. Okay. Similarly, full coverage car insurance is about 9% more expensive than the national average. So if you are looking to move to Austin and you're looking at the national average, you're about 10 to right under 20% more here in Austin based on the coverage that you get. If you're currently living in Austin and you're thinking, hey, it's about time for me to get a new vehicle or wanna upgrade, understand that that insurance premium may be a little bit more than what you probably have been having or what you're probably used to. So account for that in your budget. Think about that when you are making that move or making that purchase, that insurance rate is typically a bit higher than the national average. So I wanna share that so that you can have that and add that to your budget as well. So to tie it all up, when we're thinking about the true cost of living for your transportation, your personal vehicle, we touched on the cost of the personal vehicle, the, the, the gas to get around with your in your vehicle, maintenance and repairs, registration, fees, taxes, 
And then lastly, we touched on insurance, right? So a short video, I probably didn't tell you anything that you didn't already know in the back of your mind, but hopefully I shared something that you were like, oh yeah, I do need to account for that. So you can write that down. Hopefully some of the stats and some of the figures also allows you to be prepared for um, what you're gonna get into or to plan your budget if it's something that you're thinking about doing down the line, right? So I hope this has been a little bit helpful. And honestly, it's I know it's easy, easier to hear and, and most people can think through this relatively easy enough, but if you're the type of person who wants to see, you know, numbers and figures and you want to play with different amounts and numbers, then also in this video, we've included a cost of living calculator so that you can also play with the different figures from where you are to perhaps moving here to Austin or to another city in Texas. And that should be in the description below uh, so that you're able to access this free to use. So I hope that's a help. We've also included a monthly car cost calculator by our friends over at nerdwallet.com. So if you wanted to calculate things or play with things, uh, figures and numbers just for car costs, that's also in the description below. So just kind of tie that up with a bow. We have two free calculators in the description. You have one that's focused strictly on transportation and another one just all costs of living elements included. So you're able to kind of see uh, where your dollar gets you when moving from one place to the other. So I hope that's helpful uh, as well. And with that, we're gonna wrap up. I wanna say thank you for your time. Thanks for sitting through this quick little video. If this was helpful, please let me know. If you like the breakdown of the cost of living, hey, Marcus, we did cost of living transportation. I'd like to see another uh, breakdown of cost of living. So we can just kind of break those up in small pieces. I'm happy to do it. Let me know what you're interested in. Leave it in the comment below. If not, then we'll probably do a update just for cost of living as a whole in a future video. But until then, I hope this finds you in great health. Stay awesome, stay amazing. I'll see you on the next one.